FTP server. All right, now before I get into uh, the stuff I want to do with the bees and whatnot, I saw something that I just have to give it a try uh, in a video that Biffa did very recently he showed how to do something extremely cool and involved this thing the gravity gun made like so and basically it seems that if when you're carrying a gravity gun you get hit by lightning if you have while well, you have one on your hot bar it turns into a supercharged gravity gun normally requiring a nether star to make it but seems that once you do that if you have access to an uncrafting table which there happens to be one at spawn then you can take that uncrafting table and you can uncraft those gravity guns those supercharged gravity guns and recover the nether stars along with everything else you use to make them and so I made a few gravity guns Overkill, perhaps? Yeah, I suppose. But that's all right. I don't mind overkill. All right. I do have to have a diamond on the hot, but have a diamond there to drop in here. Basically, the idea is. Uh, well, let me finish doing this right. The idea is you an easy way to get struck by lightning is when opening a twilight portal. And I'll be right back when I get two more flowers. Alright, as I was saying, normally getting struck by lightning isn't very easy. I mean, even when you've got a Mistcraft age that has instabilities and lots of lightning all over the place, you still don't get hit by lightning very often. But when opening a mist, a portal to the twilight, lightning strikes when you toss the diamond in. So I've got eight gravity guns on my hot bar. Let's get hit by lightning. Boom take three hearts of damage but I would say it's well worth it I now have eight no excuse me the ones in my inventory went as well I now have ten supercharged gravity guns gee what am I gonna do with that <laughs> I think I know what I'm gonna do with that and I'll get myself straightened around here and I will meet you back at spawn alright I've just arrived and now in here there's an uncrafting table there we are. Just take this thing, set it in here. You see that it will cost nine levels to uncraft a thing. And you get everything that was caught that was used to make it. Drop it in here. Alright. Uh, I'm a little short on levels, so I'm going to head over to an XP farm grab myself some XP and I'm going to uncraft the rest of these supercharged gravity guns now that may be a cheat and it's absolutely I'm almost certain this is going to be something that's going to be addressed in a new, another update any, sometime soon I mean count on it something like that isn't going to be let alone so I'm going to grab what levels I can. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and start this thing going. Noisy as it is. And, uh, well, it's gathering up some more experience. I'm going to run back here and uncraft a few more of these things. And gather up some nether stars because there have been some things that I would have liked to make that require a nether star to do. And now, nether stars are not out of reach. So, 
I mean, yes. Nether star, fight the wither, you get a nether star. That's true. But fighting the wither requires hunting up wither skeletons to get the skulls. And that is often more of a grind than anybody has any interest in. And so, I'll be back after I get the rest of these things uncrafted. There we go. Ten nether stars. Not bad. And the rest of these items are pretty much the ingredients that it cost to make the original gravity guns. So, not bad. I end up uh, spending a diamond on the Twilight Portal, which sooner or later I would have anyway, and uh, one block of glowstone per gravity gun. Not bad at all. So, I think that is a very worthwhile exchange, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to be making a bunch more of these things over time. And in the meantime, I will now get on with the episode. I've been uh, kind of tending through to my bees here, just kind of keeping things going. Got the Rocky Queen here doing her thing. And over here I've got meadows going. And I've got commons breeding in here. And the purebred Valiant are going here. I've got Ebony's going here. And over here, another set of Valiants, which I'm thinking maybe I need to get something else there. And over here, I've got my Tropicals. I've got two apiaries going with these, because I found a couple of queens. Or, well, a queen and a princess, or something like that. Anyway, it was enough to get two apiaries going. And there is one thing about these things. Now, this is a purebred line, so I'm not bothering to uh, do anything else any uh, analyzing every step and so on. I'm just taking them through the next level each time. But there is one thing. You see, I pop these things in here and if I hang around these hives for any great lengths of time, like more than a minute or two, it's very likely that I will suffer the effect of these things, which is poison. It's not a terminal poison, you know, it's you know, kind of like the cave spider thing and so on. It, it, it's not going to kill you unless there's something else around attacking, but it's a pain in the butt, it's annoying, and so on. And so, while I centrifuge this silky comb to see if I get any propolis out of it, I have a solution. You see, one, I have looked around and there is something that will prevent the poison that these things create, and it's something I want anyway, and that is the Quantum Suit Helmet. And I'm thinking, you know, I've just about got everything I need to make that, so why don't I do that? And the only thing that I'm lacking is the machine required, well, let's see, let's look up the Quantum Suit Helmet. Here we go. You see, it's not that complicated of a recipe. Dang, a nano suit helmet, I have one. Lapo crystal, reinforced glass, a couple of advanced circuits, and two iridium plates. The iridium plates you make in an implosion compressor from four iridium ingots, advanced alloys, diamond dust. See, that's not a problem. The implosion compressor, you take the ingot, put it in there with some industrial TNT, and bingo, you get a re plate and dark ashes. I don't know what the heck you use dark ashes for, but I'm sure I'll think of something. All right, let's take the silky propolis and run that through there again. I need to automate this. And from the silky propolis, you have a chance of getting silk wisp, which is useful, and propolis, which is very useful. It's necessary in making apiaris pipes for one thing, and it's used in several other things as well. Okay, this is my third bit of propolis. 
And so I get one more, I can make a couple of APRS pipes and automate those two things to just keep them producing automatically so that they'll keep going even when I'm not around. But in the meantime, I think I want to uh, do something about that quantum suit helmet so that I can be working around or near those things without having to deal with the annoyance of poison. And really, it is an annoyance. Okay, now, let's see. Uh, I've got the eight standard machine casings necessary. I'm set up to make the reinforced machine casings, which, as you saw, was actually pretty simple. It was just uh, some chipsets, which you could also be using advanced circuits, some steel, an advanced machine block, bingo. Alright, uh, let's just pop downstairs here, and I'm going to go ahead and go over here, and go down, and I think I'm just going to set this multi-block right over here. need to look briefly. Uh, okay, yeah, alright. The standard machine casings go at the corners of this 3x3. Three three, and the other blocks are advanced machine casings. things in the corners. And then all we have to do is just pop a implosion compressor there. And that's not that big of a deal to make either. Let's look that up. Okay, let's see. Electronic circuits, a compressor, a couple of advanced machine blocks, and some advanced alloy. I've got m almost all of that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and make up some electronic circuits and a compressor, and I'll be back. All right, let's see here. We've got uh, there's some circuits right here. So here's a circuit. Let's go ahead and use this one. Some stone. A circuit over here and grab a machine block pop that in there we've got a compressor alright now the implosion compressor we need that we need a couple of advanced machine blocks again not a problem take a couple of machine blocks stop over here at the carbon plates at the advanced alloy bingo take some of that advanced alloy and we put these guys here this goes in the corners and let's see that's regular circuits okay one implosion compressor bingo a Greg Tech machine that is actually relatively painless to make not bad just pop this on here and we now have an implosion compressor all I need to do is to run some power down here to it and what I need to do there is to run a line providing 32 EU per tick so I'm gonna let's see let me look up here I know I've got a 32 EU per tick line over here as a matter of fact, right back there. Ah, uh, yes. Little unplanned extensions I have made to the structure.
this out. There's a bat box, and here is a 32 EU per tick line. So all I need to do let's see. Okay, I'm not interfering with anything. I just dig this sucker all the way down. run the power into this block. Not a problem. All right, let me run back up top side and get some glass fiber cable. I know you don't need glass fiber for a 32 EU per tick line, but the reasoning is that glass fiber has little to no power loss. Well, very little. It, it does end up with some power loss eventually, but... Okay, let's just... Uh, okay, we'll just connect there. Like so. Head down here. And run the power line the rest of the way down here I may need to make up some more of this but that won't be a problem oh that's right shift Alright, just enough. Okay. I'm assuming the green light means it has sufficient power. Alright, now, let's see. I'm going to need some industrial TNT. Which needs to start with TNT. So let's get some sand. And we'll need some flint. And I need to get some gunpowder. Fortunately, I have a stash of that, too. And I'll be back with the gunpowder. All right. I figured it would be kind of handy just to have a little setup here where making the industrial TNT would be a simple matter. So I'm just going to set up a couple of project tables. And in this one, I'm going to set up the standard, this is how you make TNT recipe. Drop all the sand and gunpowder in there. Grab three TNT and go over here to this one. And set up the recipe for the industrial TNT. I'll have to bring some more flint up here, so I'm going to go ahead and... Alright, well, that's... I'll need to bring more sand up, too. But anyway... I'll bring more supplies up and so on. So, now all i got to do is put some... Let's see. Let's get my... Alright, quantum suit helmet and iridium plate. To make the alloy ingot, I need four iridium ingots, four advanced alloys, and some diamond dust. Okay, diamond dust sounds expensive. And truth be told, it is. It costs a diamond. Alright. mistaken, I do believe disable the output there we'll drop a diamond in the pulverizer and we should get diamond dust coming out of there 
Okay. We'll start out with four of them. And then we'll go from there. Could have sworn I'd put in, I had put four in there, but apparently not. All right. Now, iridium. That's easy. We'll get some UU matter. All right. I do like that portable hole. So freaking handy. What was that? Okay. Lava. What's this? Titanium dust. Cool. But we're after iridium ore. Alright, that gives us more than enough iridium ore. And I'll need to run that through the compressor. And I'll be back when that's done compressing. Alright, I've got my iridium ingots. Let's go ahead and set that up with the diamond dust and some advanced alloy. And that may not be enough. Wait a minute, I've got some more right here. Alright. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, that's a rolling machine recipe. Alright. Not thrilled with that, but it's no big deal. I have a rolling machine right here. Alright. Go ahead and process that and get these out of there. Alright, diamond dust. Advanced alloys. And we'll go ahead and get our iridium alloys. Our iridium alloy ingots. And once those are done, we'll head down to the implosion compressor. All right, implosion compressor, here we are. We have iridium alloy ingots, and I believe we need eight industrial TNT per ingot. Or is it 16? Let's just go ahead and put the whole bloody stack in there. Incomplete machine casing. All right. I looked this thing up on the wiki, and what I built is what I is uh, what it said. But this is apparently incomplete. I'm gonna have to look up some resources here and figure out what's going on. I'll be back. All right. I figured out what I did wrong. All right. I'll take this out of here. And the thing that I did wrong was that center space is supposed to be left empty. And I should have noticed it when my number of components didn't come out right. Alright, wait for this thing to update. Okay, any time now. I'll be back when it finally updates. All right, I figured out what it is I did wrong, and it's a real dumb moment. This block needs to go top center. So let's disconnect the power lines. And let's see, I need to get out a wrench. I'm hoping the crescent hammer will do the 
trick? No, it will not. So we'll just dash on up top side here. And get the electric wrench. As soon as I can find it. There we go. Electric wrench. sure we're in lossless mode. Pop that sucker off of there. And for now, I'm just going to set it up like this. I will later on, I will lower this thing down and recess it into the floor, but for right now this will do. Alright, let's connect the power. since I've been such a derp and arranged it to be up here like so. I built myself a little stair step to get up here. And now, my iridium alloy ingots. Throw in some industrial TNT. Boom. Four iridium plates, 16 dark ashes, and it is taking eight industrial TNT per operation. Alright, let's get upstairs and put this stuff to use. So, I derped it up a little bit, but I managed to pull it out and make it work anyway. Alright. Quantum suit helmet, which is the point of all this. We need an iridium, a uh, lapo crystal, some reinforced glass, and a couple of advanced circuits. Let's see, here's two advanced circuits. And here's a Lapatron crystal. And let's start putting this together. There's the reinforced glass. Alright, two iridium plates. And a nano suit helmet. Quantum suit helmet. Alright. Take this sucker up here to charge. As a matter of fact, be better off probably going up here. Yeah, put the portable hole in the MFSU. Yeah, really brilliant. Okay, this is going to take a while to charge because the uh, thermal generator is offline. I have to move my nether lava source again. I really haven't felt like bothering with that right now because it's a pain. So, I'm going to give this a few minutes to charge and I'll be back. And while I was waiting for that to charge, I decided to go ahead and take the next step and make the nano be quantum suit leggings as well. Oh, wait a minute. Oops. There we go. Quantum suit leggings. All right, I'm going to spend the next several minutes getting this and the helmet charged up, and I'll be back. All right, these things are charged up. Let's try them out. Let's see. I don't do this F5 thing very often, but... Yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right, now, the way I understand that how that thing works, these tropical bees should no longer be a poison problem. So I'm going to set these guys going, and I'm going to hang around here, and give them a chance to try to poison me. Uh, wait a minute, it's getting to night. So, okay, I'm the only one on. I can go ahead and sleep till day. All right. Now, 
let's just hang around here normally after a couple of minutes be hanging around here within two minutes of hanging in this spot right here I would normally get stung half to pieces I get stung I'd get the poison effect and it would take me down to half a heart see they hit but the poison didn't take not bad not bad at all and then of course there's this really super fast run speed from the quantum suit legs I like that excellent now uh, let's see I am probably going to go ahead and make the boots and even the chest plate although uh, I'm probably going to prefer the advanced electric jetpack for the time being because uh, I can fly with it and I can't fly with the body armor and so on and one of the things I'm going to have to do is get some more power going to be able to keep this stuff running now the solar panels no big deal same recipe as before the advanced solar panel which requires one of these to start with right here there is the irradiant glass panes which is a little bit of a pain a little expensive but not that big of a problem and the advanced circuits the advanced alloy but then there's this little guy irradiant reinforced plate which is a diamond and scenarium part and you get that from UU matter and glowstone not too bad of a problem reinforced iridium iron plate are you ready for this one advanced alloys and carbon plate around an iridium iron plate the iridium iron plate is like so so there's a little bit more involved now to come up with a stack of advanced solar panels I will do it it's going to take some time and I'm probably going to go ahead and do most of that off camera and get that power hooked up not only to be able to keep this uh, quantum stuff charged but also in doing that I get another stack of advanced solar panels coming out over here going out that way I'm going to rig up a bunch more MFSUs and I'm going to put in at least two more vertical stacks of MFSUs going down that way to power the matter fabricator so that we can get more uh, UU matter coming up a little faster. In the meantime, that's about it for this time. I'm going to keep working on this stuff and, oh wait a minute, there was one thing. Let's see, in my quarry age here, I have to point out an observation I made as soon as the area finishes loading. go. You take a look at the walls here and the floor. Am I crazy or did I get dense ores? I mean, I didn't specify it obviously, but I didn't necessarily specify everything when making this age. As a matter of fact, this was a randomly generated age. No, it wasn't random. I did specify a few things, but I didn't have enough pages to specify everything. So, uh, it looks, this looks like dense ore. I've seen dense ore before, and this kind of really looks like it. That would be really cool had I gotten dense ores as one of the randomly added on things. And it would explain the, uh, charged aspect, the instability that gives it, gives me, uh, charged and slowness. Although I have there is a cure for the slowness thing. As long as you have something between you and the sky, the slowness wears off and you don't have it anymore. So that's why I built a roof up here. Alright, so I'm just observing there. That looks to me like dense ore. It really does. And uh, that would be extremely cool if it was. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Bye-bye.